Most mainstream historians, for example, have no idea what to make of a figure like Madame Blavatsky. They think of her as some huckster or carnival performer. They don't know where to look, and even if you could show them where to look, they're bored with the topic. They don't want to look there. So, for example, Mahatma Gandhi, in his letters and diaries, was very plain about the fact that Madame Blavatsky as a person and theosophy as a principle had an enormous formative effect on the Indian independence movement. India today is the largest democracy in the world. Gandhi traced his early, earliest influences back to Madame Blavatsky. This gets lost within mainstream history because mainstream historians are trained in a kind of conformist mindset, as we all are, to regard certain things as serious, certain things as nonsense. And it dawned on me that the esoteric and occult subculture was going to lose its own history unless it wrote its own history. You can't depend upon historians from other fields who may be very indifferent to some of these movements, who don't have any understanding of the values and practices and ideals of these movements to write that history for you. It will not happen. It will be forgotten or it will be written about in a very caricatured way. So I saw that need in the historical literature that the occult subcultures and the figures behind them were either being ignored or being misunderstood. And my conviction was and remains that something in their lives was really worth defending. They stood for something. And I wanted to capture their own intellectual and spiritual search, as well as their foibles and their failures, of which there were many. But there were great successes as well. There were great acts of integrity. And I wanted to capture that full picture. So that's what I, that's what I attempted in Occult America. In the here and now, I'm very interested in New Thought, which is the spiritual philosophy that grew out of the New England mental healing movement in the late 19th century. New Thought is sometimes known as the power of positive thinking. I'm very interested in the question of whether thoughts are causative. And I answer that question in the affirmative, but that still leaves open so many mysteries and questions that build upon one another. How are they causative? Why are they causative? In what circumstances can my thoughts actually affect and rearrange reality and experience and physicality? And in what circumstances does that not work? The problem with new thought is that it's failed to grow intellectually so that we think of new thought principles of positive mind principles as things that belong on refrigerator magnets or inspirational page a day calendars. But in fact, new thought ideas, the question of the mind's influence is for me, the most radical question facing humanity of say the past 150 years. I think within our generation and within the folds of things that we're discovering today in fields like neuroplasticity, placebo studies, and quantum physics, we are encountering ideas about the mind that are going to change our conception of what it means to be human as much as Darwinism changed that conception in the Victorian age. That's unfolding right now within our own generation.